This is the MobaPad Elite Huban controller. So let's have a look inside the box, shall we? Because this comes with so much stuff. So straight away, we get a manual showing all the things it can do. I'll go over specs very shortly. This is the controller. So there we go. It looks freaking awesome. I love the design of it. But we also get loads of extra stuff inside the box as well. Some spare joystick caps, braided USB-C cable. So USB-A to USB-C. But it is also Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless because it comes with a dongle as well. So this is a multi-platform controller. Then you may see in the bottom just here, we've got some more joystick caps just there. So there's a couple of spares. And then we also get these, which are like, you know, face button replacements in an Xbox layout. So you can actually swap it from a Nintendo layout to a an Xbox layout. But let me tell you the specs. So this controller works with Switch, PC, Android, and iOS. It's wired Bluetooth for 2.4 gigahertz with that dongle. So it's got both HD, rumble, and linear, which you can switch backwards and forth from. It's also got these mechanical face buttons. It's also got Alps joysticks, and there's some more to that, which we'll go over in a minute. It's got Hall Effect triggers. Hall Effect triggers, and they can be adjusted, so it goes from sort of like half depth to full depth. Yeah, and they're analog triggers as well. It's got six axis gyro, so you can use motion controls. It's got macro paddles on the back as well. It's got turbo mode, NFC, and supposedly 35 hours battery life. That's pretty nuts. So it's very, very similar in design to an Xbox controller. I would say like very, very slightly smaller. Oh, and it's got RGB as well. So it does have RGB LEDs, which you can see there. And obviously wake from sleep. So I've just shown you that, right? And it's got these quite nice like textured grips all the way around the back, but it does feel pretty good. And for some reason you can actually pop these off. So you can just sort of like slide your nail underneath the groove and you can pop these off. The rest of the controller is sort of like this matte effect. So if I get the light on it, it's not like, you know, glossy or anything. It's quite quite a nice sort of look and feel and design. I actually quite like the different colors of purple here. I'm a big purple fan, if you haven't noticed. It's got a good weight to it. There's nothing really like rattly about it. And I do like that because sometimes like buttons rattle and stuff, especially with this one, which you can swap the buttons with. Button wise, we've got our plus at the top. We've got minus, we've got screenshot, we've got home. Then we've got turbo and the macro button just there. You can change the RGB LEDs as well by pressing, I think it's macro and like up. Yeah, so you can change the breathing effect and you can change the color by pressing macro and the like uh, minus button as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got a D-pad, which actually is all right. Rather nice triggers and bumpers as well. We've got USB-C at the top. At the top just here is actually our switches for the triggers. So if I do that, it, it you know makes it full depth. Whereas if I switch it that way, it's only like half trigger. And then on the back, we've got that switch just here, which is either off, linear, or HD rumble. So that's our rumble switch. I actually quite like the fact that there's an off switch because that's gonna give you more battery life if you need it. And some people just don't care for rumble, which is weird. I like it, but you know, some people don't, so you can turn it off. Uh, we've also got the like gyro mode button here. I'm not too sure why there's a button for it, but yeah, okay. And then we've got our sync button as well. So you can sync this. So like I said, this does have mechanical face buttons. So just like a mouse switch, it's like that essentially. So when you click a mouse, it's actually got a mechanical you know, input, as opposed to most controllers use a membrane input and they can feel pretty mushy and horrible. Whereas this actually like clicks, you know? So I'm just like loading up games and stuff here, but it's actually got a click. So it's not overly loud. I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it in here. It's not overly loud, it's, it's not intrusive, you know? I actually quite like it because it's gonna be really responsive. They're quick to actuate, quick to return. There's no like pre or post travel either and they've got a 50 million click lifespan, which is pretty good. Now the shoulder buttons actually feel really nice as well. Now these aren't mechanical, they're just sort of your normal ones, but you know, they, they feel nice and clicky and responsive, I do like that. Now these, the triggers are analog. 
So there's only like, what, like two games on the Switch that you can use analog triggers with, but being a multi-platform controller, if you're using this with PC or whatever, then you can actually use the analog you know, input. So just quickly, analog versus digital. Digital input is just like a button press, so it's either on or off. Analog is you can gradually increase the speed of your car, for example, by like how quickly or how far down you pull the trigger. So this has analog triggers. And of course, you've got that switch that you can switch and then it changes the depth just there. Now the D-pad's okay. There's nothing wrong with the D-pad. It's not the best D-pad, I'll say that, but you know, it's got a D-pad and it rolls all the way around. It's got an eight input, you know, design, which is pretty cool. Now joystick wise, we've got Alps joysticks, but they did say to me that they might be releasing a Hall Effect joystick version, but I've not heard anything about that ever since they sent me this. So I'm not too sure if they have or not, who knows, but it's got Alps joysticks. They definitely feel nice. Now, one thing I do like is that they've got these like metal, uh, like rings around them and that is to sort of try and stop drift You know drift happens when dirt and dust and debris and stuff gets inside the joystick right and it clogs it up and then it inputs weirdly and then it can cause drift so what they've done is they've put these like rings around the joystick like area and then the metal here so that when it's actually like moving around it it's not going to be grinding the plastic or paint off and then causing you know drift over time so that at least they're conscious about it and they're trying to prevent it which is good now the joysticks that come with it these are like a, a like a rubbery plastic i mean they are covered in rubber but they do still feel a little bit plasticky, but you can remove them. So you just pull them off like that, and then it leaves a little stub there, and you've got different versions. So the ones it comes with, you get like two sets of the same that it comes with, which is just like, you know, your normal ones just here. And then you also get these ones, which are various heights, but they also have different grips as well. So. The one that comes installed is concave, whereas this one just here is actually flat and it's also got like rubber spikes all the way around. And I actually prefer the, the separate ones because they just, they feel nicer. There's more grip on them. The ones that come installed are pretty slippery. And I've played quite a few games with this to be fair already. And I did prefer the ones that come in the box, but they do have these variable heights. So you get loads of different ones just here for, you know, whatever you want to play. Because some people prefer the extra height on a joystick because it gives you more accurate accuracy because there's more range of motion and to do that you just line it up and push it in like that and now we've got like a super tall stick right so you know that's that's pretty cool for those that like it i actually genuinely quite like these extended sticks now all right next up let me show you those button swaps so there's like a little notch just there and you just kind of like jam your finger under it and just try and like pull it up without breaking it okay so that was way more fiddly than the first time i did it and i think that's why these sides come off so that you can kind of get under there and pull it up be careful you know i properly stabbed my thumb doing that so you know watch out and the face buttons effectively you know like pop out so whoop, there it goes so you can swap them over for you know other buttons just here and they are lined up so you can have an xbox layout by using the you know the caps that come in the box so that's pretty cool if you're going to be using this on pc or something like that then you can actually you know swap it over and you probably won't be doing that like very often because you'll probably either be you know playing it on switch or maybe playing it on steam deck with your switch button layout which is available on there or whatever but once you've swapped it at least you can actually customize it for how you want it to be now of course we do have the macro paddles so you can assign macros to these paddles or you can assign singular like button presses as well and we do have turbo as well so turbo if you don't know is when you assign turbo to say a you press and hold a and it will just repeat that action for you or you can do it the other way around where you press and press a once and then it will just keep repeating it until you press it again or you can clear it now the rumble switch like i said earlier you do have linear off or hd rumble so linear rumble is just going to be like the same intensity of rumble all the time hd rumble is like a variable rumble right so if something like footsteps happen it's going to be like a low rumble whereas if you get slapped in the face really hard with like a i don't know a shovel then 
you know, that's going to be a much greater rumble. And it does work really well. Like I said, I've been playing, I played like Diablo 3 and stuff on the Switch using this. And I actually noticed the HD rumble and I did really enjoy that. Oh, and one thing I totally forgot to say is it's got NFC. Who really uses NFC on controllers? All of my Amiibos are still in their boxes. So I think that pretty much covers everything. But let's just talk about price and availability. This is like a, an Eastern market product. So it's not readily available here in the UK or Europe or even America, but it is on the American Amazon. So I suppose it's available there, right? But it's pretty expensive, it's $90. This pretty much does everything. The only letdown is that lack of Hall Effect joysticks. But yeah, $90 is pretty steep. You can import it via AliExpress, the sort of Eastern version of eBay kind of thing. And I've seen that going for around $50. But I mean, you've got to be pretty, you know, careful ordering on a place like that because there's a lot of dodgy sellers, right? But yeah, I mean, the controller itself, it's up to you whether you think it's worth that. Now, I think, you know, if I didn't know the price of this, I think it's a really good controller. It's got everything, like literally everything you could think of and, you know, all the customization that you can do with it. I, th I think it's a really solid controller and it does feel good, you know, like it feels good quality. I would have said this was like a $60 controller if someone asked me from a third party but you know if you can find it on sale then i'd say it's probably worth it because this can be your one-stop shop controller because it can connect to pretty much everything so there you go what do you think of the MobaPad elite controller let me know down in the comments and also go and check me and aj out over here from our podcast channel so go head over there and subscribe to that channel as well where me and aj talk about everything gaming in detail in longer form videos and also another video from me down here and make sure to smash that that subscribe button and yeah just let me know your thoughts down in the comments and i'll see you in the next one